Hey, I'm Rachel, the CEO of Intrinio. If you care at all about investor rights, transparency in the markets, open data, or the democratization of finance, keep listening. Because in this video, I am going to explain a powerful technology that is not very well known, but it is also not so new. It's called XBRL. So let's get you up to speed. To start, what is XBRL? Perhaps a better way to answer this question is, how did we get to XBRL? XBRL is an acronym for Extensible Business Reporting Language. Well, sort of. Using X instead of E just sounds more cool. XBRL is, at its most basic form, a programming language, but it's particularly powerful, and I'll explain why soon. XBRL is based strongly on XML, Extensible Markup Language, which is a standard that's been around for almost 25 years. And just for fun, while we're swimming in the acronyms, and because it will be referenced later, the acronym HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. The simplest way to think of the differences between HTML and XML is this. HTML is a means of transmitting data visually, while XML is a means of transmitting the data itself. Now that gets us to the point of XBRL, to transmit business information in a format that is easily consumable by computers. Well, all publicly traded companies in the United States, even small companies, must file a variety of different reports to the Securities and Exchange Commission periodically. You can think of it like having to file additional tax returns, but more frequently and with a completely new set of rules. In fact, just like the IRS, the SEC has a slew of forms that are required under varying circumstances. Now, one of these forms, the 10K, can be over 300 pages long, so key information can become buried. Given this complexity of financial reporting, XBRL is an ideal format for making it more easily consumable by computers and therefore all investors. In effect, a set of XBRL files represents a standalone database of financial information describing financial condition, risk, profit and loss, equity, liabilities, assets, events, explanations or excuses, <laughs> and more. So why have XBRL at all? In two simple words, transparency and consistency. Before financial reports were filed in XBRL, they were just PDF, HTML, or text displays of data. Before that, they were literally printed and mailed to shareholders. Analyzing mailed-in reports would be incredibly time-consuming and subject to wide differences in the ways that companies describe their accounting concepts, even in the same company from year to year. Once electronic reports in HTML and PDF were available, it solved part of the problem. The filings at this point could be consumed by computers, but not all of it. Too much variation in reporting still existed, but even worse, teasing data out of a PDF document or an HTML table is almost impossible to do reliably. XBRL solved most of these problems. It represents a standardized way for companies across the world to file data that could be extracted, processed, and analyzed with a much higher degree of automation and efficiency. So how do you consume XBRL data? While it's certainly easier to analyze data from an XBRL filing than it is from a PDF, it's still not easy. Viewing the data from production to consumption. Imagine an investor who wants to research and analyze a wide range of companies' performance over several years. Companies' accountants create and file reports in XBRL to get started. Then, various agencies make these reports available, like the SEC in the United States. The investor then downloads the reports, and then... Herein lies the problem. How does one even read data out of an XBRL filing? You'd need to write an application that transforms XBRL into something useful. For example, suppose that you wanted to compare gross profit for each company in a list. Since gross profit is a measure made over a duration like each quarter or year to date, you'd have to identify overlapping periods between each of the companies. You'd have to figure out which concepts they use to report revenue, figure out which currency the value is in, and convert it to a common currency. You'd have to determine if the company reported additional revenue from subsidiaries that's not already included in the main revenue. There's a lot to it. So now we're gonna talk about the four pillars of XBRL. Understanding the four pillars of XBRL will help you get a handle on consuming this data. XBRL creates associations between different items, much like a database does. 
but it does not have the rigid referential integrity and ease of querying that traditional databases do have. As a result, extracting data from an XBRL report involves a lot of deduplication, inference, and disambiguation. It really can't be used on its own, but it is a source to create usable data. Oversimplifying things. Think of each of these items as pillars and everything else is built on top of them. They are essentially the equivalent of tables inside of a database. First, there's roles, statements, notes, disclosures, and documents. Next, there's concepts, revenue, gross profit, short-term investments, and so many more. Then, contexts, instance, point in time, or durations, period of time. And lastly, facts, a value that is reported, particular concept, and context. Once these elements have been created, associations between them can be confidently identified. Roles have concepts, concepts have facts, facts have context, and context have dates. Many associations can be inferred, for example, fiscal year and quarter. In a nutshell, even though extracting the raw data is not particularly difficult, establishing the associations between roles, concepts, context, and facts presents many challenges. The data is not very usable until you've done this. XBRL has a concept of discoverable taxonomies, which is where concepts are defined. A new US GAAP taxonomy comes out once a year that includes more than 15,000 distinct concepts with hundreds and even thousands that are either added or removed each year. American Depository Receipts, or ADRs, that file with the SEC also use the IFRS taxonomy. In fact, some ADRs use both US GAAP and IFRS in the same filing. Last but not least, the extensible part of XBRL lets companies create their own taxonomies that include concepts that describe something that maybe doesn't quite fit into the US GAAP or IFRS framework. At Intrinio, we sell this type of data, and out of the entirety of all filings at the SEC in a calendar year, including the combination of US GAAP, IFRS, and custom taxonomies, more than 45,000 distinct XBRL concepts were used in our data set. Okay, now we're gonna talk about standardizing XBRL data. Assuming that all the data has been retrieved, deduplicated, disambiguated, and inferred, that data can now be used to compare one company to another or a company's current filing to those prior, except it can't. For any given generalized accounting idea, operating revenue, for example, there might be a dozen or more different ways that a company reports that data. Intrinio uses AI and machine learning to create this generalization and has a fixed set of Intrinio data tags, one of which is for operating revenue, conveniently named operating revenue. Looking at a thousand recent concepts that were categorized into this tag, the most common XBRL concept, revenue from contract with customer excluding assessed tax, still only accounts for 20% of actual revenue. Other XBRL concepts used include revenue, revenues won, and even massively multiplayer online role-playing games revenue. Complicating standardization even further, many companies have a line item for total combined operating revenue and provide additional detail that adds up to that total. For example, the concept rental income operating. This is a concept that legitimately describes operating revenue. But if the company also reported a true operating revenue line item, they're gonna get double counted. Now, it gets further muddied by dimensions. Dimensions in XBRL let a company offer further detail into a particular fact. Apple's income statement includes separate dimensions for products and services, along with a line item that combines the two. Not all companies that report dimensions have a non-dimensionalized counterpart, and even when they do, they don't always add up. The bottom line, those 45,000 XBRL concepts ultimately get compressed into fewer than 1,000 standardized tags. This is akin to a lossy compression with images used by many graphic formats. It's important for this type of compression in graphics for speed and cost, but with standardization, it's important for comparability. The loss of resolution is not anywhere near the apparent cost. 1,000 tags from 45,000 concepts would seem to imply a 97.8% loss because Intrinio is ultimately standardizing these concepts into extremely similar groups of things. We can't compare Apple's revenue from oil drilling with ExxonMobil's sale of phones, but we can put both of these things into the same bucket and compare those buckets, and it turns out to be very effective. So let's talk about an easier way. Intrinio's standardized fundamentals data set skips 
all of the steps we just outlined for you. We handle retrieval, deduplication, disambiguation, inference, and standardization automatically. As XBRL filings are made available at the SEC, as reported data is extracted, associations created, and inferences made. The as reported data goes through Intrinio's standardization process, which uses human guided AI and machine learning to convert those reported tags, XBRL, IFRS, or custom, to Intrinio standardized tags. Extensive validation occurs using calculation definitions provided in the filing to ensure, for example, that totals match and no double counting has occurred. Problems are then flagged and reviewed. The data is made available through web APIs and SDKs, fully standardized data for every filing for more than 10 years. Now let's talk about the big picture, all right? You've got a solid understanding of what XBRL is. When the power of XBRL data is combined with technology like we have at Intrinio, financial statement or fundamental data is made more accessible, more affordable, and more usable. This massively increases transparency and efficiency in the markets, giving a leg up to retail investors, innovators, new investors, and new businesses. XBRL is a powerful, relatively unknown technology that is working behind the scenes to increase transparency in markets, democratize investing, and stand up for investor rights. At Intrinio, we're proud to be members of XBRL US. It's an organization working to increase the adoption of XBRL across the country. In the coming years, we hope to see other data sets unlocked and moved off of the archaic PDF form and into XBRL, like ESG data or municipal bond data, for example. The sky is a limit. If you are looking for a reliable fundamental data feed, please click one of the links below to chat with our team and start a free trial. Thanks for listening.